Welcome to You Are The Host, a podcast where you are the host. And by you, I mean us. And if you guys notice, I didn't introduce Jake as the host because he is now joining us as a new co-host. As the new year comes, we're going to be um, swapping some stuff around, changing some things, making things different, new, and exciting. And uh, we decided to add Jake as a third co-host because we just want this podcast to kind of alternate people. We never want the focus to be on one um returning person like myself we don't want the focus to be on me we want the focus to be on who the host is so we want to keep alternating people and new people new blood new stories yeah but it should just be you know us three myself emily and jake and uh i don't intend to add anybody else to that roster of pe- cycling people so <laughs> in the occasional you know guests we have whether it's whoever yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. but that's that's who i want the folks to be on you know whoever comes in the host, you know, yeah, exactly, <laughs> and uh, we're just we're just here to like guide it, like you said, just kind of right, right, yeah. And when it's just an episode with just us, like this, just to keep the show, you know, the show alive, because people do like to listen to it. Amazingly enough, <laughs> as stupid <laughs> as that is, oh, it's, that's always good. I mean, who's fucking crazy enough to just sit there and listen to hours of my voice? I don't know. I mean, like, when I worked maintenance, I worked maintenance. I mean, I'm now on IT now, but uh, we did 12-hour shifts, and I listened to some podcasts. Uh, there's one in particular that I really like, and, well, I mean, besides this one, I like this one, too, but the other one I watch, it's called The Dollop. Dollop? Yep. I don't want to go too much into it because I don't know copyright. I don't know how the copyright is. Nah, you can talk about is. whatever. But um, they, they're two comedians, um, and they do, like, history podcasts, but they spoof on it. Like, um, like for example, one podcast they did was about Colonel Sanders, which KFC. So it was the history of K. Yeah, <laughs> it was the history of KFC, and that man was wild. You know, it goes about his life, and then they make jokes and they crack fun at it. But it's but the the uh, story is true all the way through. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then um, like, uh, do you remember that one that happened? It was kind of recent, but it was that guy in Colorado that went ape shit and built a bulldozer. Like out of like uh I don't know like tin tin metal, I, I think the story goes he was at a muffler he he worked for some muffler shop or whatever and then the corporate came in and tried to buy him out and they did and then he lost his business so he went ape shit and built his own homemade bulldozer or I mean tank sorry it's a tank he built this tank. homemade tank and he was destroying like other businesses because he was pissed off at them for for bro how do you build a tank he just he spent months and months like just getting metal and just like welding it and just <laughs> made a fucking tank no one could destroy it <laughs> that's funny uh so, in case um, you guys can hear that in the background we do have a dog running around in here so so anyways the whole podcast was about him and his life and they built the tank and it's just they do just history history podcast but it's it's pretty funny oh huh. yeah i mean i feel like history Maybe this is controversial, but I feel like history is one of the more boring subjects to listen to. It so is like adding it, comedy to that. I think it, I, I yeah. like, but I'm a nerd though. I like history, you know. But it's funny whenever they talk about their life and they make fun of them, pretty much. Basically, yeah, it's it, it's it's funny. It's it's pretty good. So I do listen to them occasionally. That's almost like a mockumentary in a way, like basically. Yeah, you're, you're sort of saying the facts, but you're also memeing on it at the same time. Exactly, yeah. that's what they do, and I like it. They're pretty funny. So yeah, well, I don't know if we're funny. I doubt it. Uh, people people listen, so <laughs> I listen I listen back to these while I'm editing and I always just fucking laugh at the stupid jokes I make. Well of course you'd think it's cringy because it's your own voice, you oh, know. But... I mean I don't think it's cringy anymore as far as listening to my voice back, but I definitely listen to I hear some of the jokes I say and I'm like, There's no way anybody found that funny, but for some reason I think it's funny. <laughs> well what's weird is like when I listen listen to the podcast with my voice, I just I just wanna like mm-hmm. cringe, but because you know you're not used to hearing your own voice. You know right. it's not how, but it goes away. Hear, hearing it in my in my car in the radio, like you know, you Spotify. It's like, oh yeah. I mean, you'll do enough of these and you'll get used to it. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, for sure. So I mean, with that being said, uh, what made you say yes when I asked you to be a, a third co-host? I, I enjoy it. I really do. Um, I you know secretly I always wanted to do podcasts and like my friends did too, but we never went through with it. But we've always like when we were in high, when we were in high school, we thought about doing stuff like this. And our channel was just going to be about video games because we're nerds. Mm-hmm. So the whole channel was going to be about like the top like plays of Call of Duty this week, whatever. Or we're going to talk about video game news or developers that are getting fired or vice versa. But we never went through with it. But 
I've always been interested in uh, doing this, and I really want to start focusing on streaming with Twitch. Oh, okay. But I'm not very comfortable with uh, talking like in the mic, basically to either myself or uh, viewers. So this is mm-hmm. a you know, this is definitely a good way it to helps yeah to practice that yeah. Um, Speaking of that, that's going to be kind of hard for us when it's when it's just us two on a podcast. Just stay away from only talking about video games. I know it's hard because I need our, to... our fans come from many different hobby pools, as was designed by this podcast. So we can't just stay to one you know topic. Yeah, and that's fine. We can go we can go all over the place. Mm-hmm. But know? I will talk about video games a little bit because did you hear about that dude who murdered his friend over Dota? This was supposed to be Diablo two, not. Dota 2. No, I did not. <laughs> Bro, they were playing Dota 2 and they forgot to set a password on their lobby and some really rare loot dropped and somebody joined their game, stole the loot and left. And they, then the, they were arguing about who didn't lo- lock the lobby and the other guy went to the dude's house with a gun and shot him. They got ninja looted. <laughs> Fucking, yeah. Mm. They like, murdered somebody. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah, that's fucking wild. Um, so you say you, you work in 12-hour shifts and you like to listen to podcasts. Do you sometimes just listen to podcasts to have audio to listen to? Or are you actually like, do you only listen to shit that you're interested in specifically? Um, I, I go back and forth. Um, I mean, I go back from listening to music to podcasts. But the only podcast I listen to, if I'm, if I'm caught up on this one, then I just listen to the dollop. They do like two or three a week. Oh, okay. So, so pumping them out. and I only, yeah, and I mean, they're just two comedians. That's all they do, really. And I only um, listen to podcasts when I worked the weekends, which was every other weekend. I didn't listen to it when I was actually working because too much stuff going on. You know, I didn't want to mm. get distracted or something. So when I'm in the building and there's no one there in the weekends, and I was just doing maintenance on the machines, I have both my earbuds in, just listening to podcasts or music or whatever. Mm. That was the only time I listened to it. Yeah, yeah, I've always. That's been my work. I mean, I do different work, but yeah, it's been my like zone out and just fucking on autopilot listening to. That's what, yeah. Cause see now, well, I was so comfortable with what I was doing. I could easily just mindlessly just do working on the machines and still listen to the podcast. Cause I knew what I was doing. You know, it was, mm-hmm. it was like second nature. Yeah. But I got this new role as an IT, um, IT LMS support role. And it's a little different, a little challenging. What so. you doing in there? Um, right now, um, I mean, anyone can do like the IT side of things when it comes to like running internet lines, like, you know, anyone can run an internet yeah. line networking stuff. Yeah. That stuff's easy. Like I can, I can, if I don't know it, I can figure it out because I'm hands on and it's very easily. What I'm having a problem with is the LMS side, which with my company, it was called, I don't want to bore anyone with this, so I'm not going to talk a lot about it. But our um, LMS, which stands for Lab Management Systems, is called um, Optifax. And that's like our brain of our operation. Mm-hmm. I, know, I know you know what it is. Yep, but, yep. but anyways, my my role is to like support it where if people say like, blah, 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 is having a problem going through Optifax. Can you figure out why? And like, I don't want to bore the audience because there's a lot to it. And you know mm-hmm. that. There's a lot oh, to yeah. Oh, yeah. that kind of stuff. But... I know zero about any of that because in the maintenance, we never mess with OptiFacts ever. We never had to. There was no need for it. Mm-hmm. So that's challenging. Um, I mean, I'm learning every day. It's slow but surely, but I'm getting there. But I do enjoy it, though. I'm mind blown with what you can actually do in that thing. And that thing's straight from the 80s. Like, it's like command prompt, like M dot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, yeah, it definitely is. Yeah. And I'm. And you're just fucking typing in numbers and doing all this. I feel I feel like I'm coding or hacking something, and it's, <laughs> yeah. just, it's <laughs> hacker mode initiated. It's weird. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to bore the audience. Oh, dude, anymore, I bet you but... that they're all already clicked away, so it's okay. Yeah, no. <laughs> you start talking about Optifax. Well, they're I'm like, sure, well, I'm sure you got <laughs> listeners that work at. Uh, yeah. So they, they're, yeah, I'm sure they're probably kind of understanding a little bit about it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. What you uh, um, I was gonna ask uh. Two things. I got two things for you. Let me start with uh, how was your holidays? It was good. Um, as you know, I did go home uh, to Kentucky. Um, That's my second question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, question. for uh, the audience that don't know, if they can't tell by my ridiculous accent, um, I am from Kentucky. Um, I I don't really have a southern accent as much as I did when I first moved up here. And to be honest, I never really had one to begin with. I mean, I did, but it wasn't that thick. 
But uh, anyways, I went home for a week, and um, as you guys may know, they had some severe storms. Correct. There was um, I I when I went there, um, I landed two days after the storms hit, so everything was pretty fresh. And I will say, my parents, uh, they were about eight miles away from one of the tornadoes I hit. Oh, really? That's pretty they, close. No, yeah. Um, so when I landed. Um, I got to rent a car and I was driving home and there's basically where my parents live at. The best way to explain it is they lived in the country. So I'm 15 minutes away from one town and I'm 15 minutes away from another town. I'm like right in the middle. If I go north, I'm in this town. If I go south, I'm in this town. Okay. Um, so the tornado hit in um, a small town and it's the town that I pretty much went to school in and kind of grew up in, but it was still like eight miles out. So there's only one road that leaves out of the town to the country to where my parents live at, just one state road. So I couldn't, this is the only way I could go home. I'm driving down, I'm looking over to my right and my left, and I have some, um, I think I have videos of it, I think. Oh, yeah, I, I looked at some on Snap. That's how I, re- I found yeah, out yeah. about it before the news was reporting on it because I fucking looked at your Snap story and I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, as I was driving home, uh, there was trees uprooted. Um, there was houses that were just, gone um there is uh like a farm like a farming equipment place where they sell tractors and stuff roof was gone i mean tractors were flipped upside down i mean there was just debris everywhere uh, power lines power poles everything just, it just demolished and there was only one area it was like maybe a quarter mile area and that was it and what the weather uh meteorologists are saying is that touched down and it went like through that area and then just got pit back up and then traveled and then got down again somewhere else because tornadoes, they kind of do that, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it wasn't the mega tornado that they're talking about that hit like um, Bremen and Mayfield, Kentucky. That one was like a quarter mile base. I mean, that was a huge fucking tornado. Like, that was a bad one. That thing went 20 miles or something like that. It was, it? no, it was like 200 miles. Oh, two, 200 miles, yeah. It, it lit, it, from the moment it hit the ground, it traveled 200 miles or plus Which on the ground without going back up. It just, a straight path that wasn't the one that hit where uh close to my family luckily it was just a smaller one but it still did some pretty good damage that's insane um they didn't have any they had no damage to their house uh they had no, no trees down no nothing because they were like you know eight miles out now they did get a lot of wind and a lot of rain but no damage luckily but they had a lot of debris in their yard eight, that's, eight that's miles insane. out um uh, there's insulation uh tin metal um they found a street sign just Dude, it threw that shit <laughs> eight miles out yeah that's no. crazy you want to know something crazier so my mom posted in the facebook group they create a facebook group called um tri-state tornado group and it was because it affected arkansas missouri kentucky and i think maybe ohio maybe so like they created this group and people were sharing like i found this picture it says from blah 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 does anyone know this family so they're finding valuables well my mom posted the street sign that came out that said because people collect street signs. Mm-hmm. And they were like, is this anyone's street sign? Just curious. And someone commented and were like, hey, does it have a blah, blah, blah on the back? Does there are two holes on it to where it was hung up in a barn? And my mom was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the girl was like, yeah, that's my husband's. That The tornado hit us, and that's all we got left. This tornado was the one that hit Bremen, which is 30 miles out, which was a big tornado. So this fucking tornado Holy picked shit. up this sign and <laughs> threw it 30 miles. That's fucking crazy. Imagine if somebody was in the wrong place at the wrong time when that sign come flying. The the way the, <laughs> the way when I was home because the only thing the news was covering was tornado damage. That's it, obviously, because it happened. Mm-hmm. And um, they were saying that that mega tornado was thirty thousand feet up in the air. It was that tornado was so high up that it was sucking things up in the jet stream. Jesus, and that's how things are getting flying across the fucking country. That's like crazy. there was pictures and shit found in Ohio. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, it, it's it's nuts. I mean, it's is, it's ridiculous. It's that is just, insane. You know, there's a farmer that lost thirty cows and they still can't find them. Oh really? Oh, they're in space, man. They're gone. They're in space. They he literally he has thirty cows that are like you know they they tag them and everything can't find them. Not one single one. Yeah, they're up. With, they're they're, they're up in, with Elon. They're uh, in Tesla in space. They're in the fields. They're in lakes. They're in trees. I, who fuck? Who knows? Yeah. There's people that they know that should be there, but they can't find them, so they're lost. People? Oh, yeah. yeah. There was over 100. I think when I was there, there was 110 deaths, and I think there was at least like 30 people missing, I think. Yeah, shit's crazy. I don't know what it is now, but they couldn't find them. 
Like they don't know yeah. where they are. Man, how crazy is that? Like people in general are so unprepared for tornadoes. Even it, if we think we are. <laughs> it was a it was a very bad tornado. I mean, it was it was the worst one in our history ever. I mean, it was probably the worst one in United States history, I think. I mean, cuz the sheer size of it. Mm. Like even Oklahoma don't get tornadoes this bad, I don't think. And that's like tornado central there. Yeah, I don't think. I mean, they get some big ones, but normally it's because it's so flat and it's corn that it damages. But this one like went through towns and, you know. Yeah. It it, it was I mean, bad. I don't know, man. Uh, Kansas probably gets them pretty bad. They throw people into different dimensions. So. <laughs> oh yeah, and they get <laughs> and then they get those slippers and they come back home. Yeah, yeah, I think that's how it works. Yeah, but no, I but I mean, I had fun. I had fun visiting family and all that, and you know, but. Obviously, the tornadoes and stuff was pretty crazy and hearing all the stories. And, you know, luckily, I didn't have any friends or family that I know of that personally got affected. No, I know friends of friends and stuff like that that, you know, I saw on Facebook that had, you know, damages and stuff, which, you know, sucks. But luckily for me, I had no one that I knew personally that got damaged or mm-hmm. anything like that. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Well, that's fucking crazy, man. It was a crazy storm. I mean, that- it was it was nuts. Such a weird time. Of, I guess for Kentucky, is that normal storm? Like no, bad storms this time of year? No, or? no, no, no. We never. I mean, our storm, our um, what do they call it? Uh, severe weather. Uh, 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 aware. What does they call it? Be aware. Weather aware. Whatever they call it. I don't know. You know, is our <laughs> our our months is like May and June. I think those are our, those are severe okay. thunder. Those gotcha. are for severe gotcha. storm areas. So December like this? No, it's. Usually in December, when at around this time of year, it should be in the 30s, you know, yeah, 30s, maybe 40s, but 30s and 20s for sure. And I think when I was down there, it was like in the 50s and 60s. Like, I don't know what's going on, but weather in general has been kind of crazy lately. Yeah, even uh, here in Minnesota, before all this snow dumped on us, uh, yeah, you guys had storms. I was down, yeah, we had a thunderstorm <laughs> in the middle of December, which is not normal. Well, what's what's is nuts because, like, when I was home in Kentucky, we were watching the news and we were watching like a the weather channel, so like it was over all, not just local area. And there was a big storm that started in the west coast, it caused flooding and went to Colorado, it caused a lot of wind damage and you know, damage like that. Tornado was in Minnesota. And something else somewhere else. It caused, yeah. it, and that was a storm that hit you guys. And I was home. Yeah, it's not fucking normal for Minnesota though. No, for sure. no. And I was home when it hit, and I'm like, wow. In Minnesota, when Kentucky gets hit by the biggest storm ever, I go to Kentucky to visit, and I visit Kentucky, and then all of a sudden now Minnesota gets hit by a weird ass storm in December. Yeah, yeah. And then now it just fucking dumped on us all at once. Like all the snow that would normally be accumulating throughout December, it just dumped us on like two days. Yeah, it was, it was <laughs> snowing a lot. It was crazy. I'm so glad that I got the big vehicle I have because <laughs> my little car would never make it through all this snow. No, your car would. No, no. Oh, my God. There was so much. You were, like, driving down the road, and it was just, like, lopsided. Your vehicle just... Goo, goo, goo. My, my, <laughs> my Altima plowed through it. I mean, I hit a couple. I mean, it was... Yeah. <laughs> but it, it, it did, I just got new tires put on, so I got um, all-weather tires, and that helped a lot. So, yeah. But my Altima struggled, on, especially the roundabouts, because when the snow plows go around them, they, they clean them, but then they push all the snow off to the... And then you mm-hmm. run over it. Mm-hmm. But other than that, though, it was fine. The Minnesota, it's so funny. You, you'll, it's just completely normal to be driving and not even batting an eye at somebody that's like stuck in the road just trying to do like the back and forth thing. Because you, you, you know what they're doing. You know? <laughs> yeah. But then some motherfucker that comes here from Cal, uh, California would probably be like, whoa, what the hell is going on? <laughs> it's so funny to me. I was thinking that the other day when I was watching somebody try to get unstuck from a parking spot. I was like, this is just completely normal here. We're just like doing the fucking rocking back and forth. Thing. Try to get out of the- <laughs> yeah. You so imagine someone else looking like, what the hell are they doing? Nothing closes here either. No. Nothing closes. We had two really bad fucking ice storms and, and piled high with snow and everything's just normal. No. We just don't give a shit. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure you guys have some call-ins. Uh, No, not at our work. <sighs> we we didn't get any. We did, obviously. Oh, yeah? Did, you mm-hmm. know. But... People just don't want to work, I think. But, um, yeah, it's nuts to me. Like, when I first moved here in 2014, you know, I mean, we got snow in Kentucky, you know, an inch, two. I mean, if we got more than two inches at once, it was like, that's a pretty big storm for us, you know. Um, but even for, like, a half inch of snow, school got canceled. I mean, nowadays it's all online. But when I was, I was in school in 2000, like, you know, 10, 11, 12 and all mm-hmm. that, if we got snow days, it was like, hey, no school, you know, and that means you had a snow yeah, day. That was a good time sitting there watching watching the TV. 
in the morning, hoping that your school came across the bottom. Yeah, but for up here, it's <laughs> never never happened because you guys are so used to snow. Uh, yeah. But for us, you get it a, happens enough. We get a half inch of snow, and the, oh, no school. And then I mean, sometimes they'll call school off for two days. <laughs> like, yeah. It's nuts. No, it would have to be pretty bad weather, but they would cancel school often enough because the bus drivers don't want to go drive around in there. Or, like, depends on where you're located because I remember, like, uh, a lot of the times they wouldn't come pick us up because we lived in the country. Oh, yeah. So there's enough snow, they would just not pick us up, so we'd just get the day off. Everybody else would still go. Yeah. And you were, <laughs> you were excused because you didn't have a way to come to school? Yeah. Yeah, even though we really did. Like, my parents would still go to work. It's like they could drive us. But who the fuck yeah, wants to do yeah, that? Who wants to do that? Yeah, no, exactly. I if didn't even... I didn't even do school when I went to school, so what's the fucking point of being there? <laughs> and you turned out great. Look at you. Oh, yeah. From the image of everybody, whoever. Uh, see? School I mean, helped I me. mean, look at you. You're, you're drinking from a Sorry I Was Muted Cup on the podcast. Sorry I was on mute. You, you turned out pretty good. Well, let's go ahead and mute this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You turned out pretty good, I would say. But you know what? As sarcastic as I am when I say that, I think I turned out okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, you could be dead. That would mean I turned out the best. <laughs> I mean, I don't wish harm on anybody else but myself. That makes me a good person, right? Makes you the best of the best. <laughs> the best of the best. I don't know where we draw the line on who's a good person and a bad person. How do you decide that? I had this argument with somebody one time. Sorry to cut you off there. You were about to say something. But I, I, oh, I was going to say, I don't, I don't know. Like, I... I mean, it just goes based on people's morals, I guess. Right. I had this conversation with somebody, and I said, um, good and bad is subjective. Mm -hmm. The only reason we even have laws is because it's a majority vote on what's good or bad. Mm -hmm. But if you say, like, that guy murdered, he's a serial killer, and he murdered, like, 10 people. Like, it's kind of subjective if you say that he's a bad person. Now, see, if... (laughs) Now, this is my opinion. <laughs> so you get a guy uh, who's a killer. He's like, oh, he killed 10 people. I'm thinking like, oh, my God, that guy's sadistic. Like, that's terrible. Oh, but they're all child molesters. Oh, okay, that's fine. Yeah. You change your view you <laughs> on it? Yeah. Yeah, you know, like. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. It's like um, it, m- murder. I think murder is bad. That's my opinion. But murder could be good to somebody. Yeah, I mean, I think murder is bad. But I think it depends on the con. It's all about context. But then the only reason we throw them in jail is because the majority has agreed murder's bad. Yeah, but oh, getting some feedback. Oh, adjust your headphone for. Oh, I don't know. It's freaking 2020, and phones <laughs> are still interfering with. Well, we got all this. So it could have right. been anything with well, anything. It's, I just threw it on the ground. It's so a cha- it's like. a challenge. It's a challenge. This shit. One little thing could fuck the well, whole thing. Well, my phone was in my pocket, but oh, the okay. headphones. That's probably what it was. But um, um, yeah, murder is bad. Obviously, like I'm not saying go out and kill. I mean, that's that's you know, it's, it's today's society. Killing someone is bad, but killing someone who was like a child raper is that bad? Yeah, no, I don't think so. You don't, you don't think so? I don't think it's bad to kill them. Also, uh, we say killing's bad in terms of what. A civilian kills a civilian because we literally can go out and get a job where it's to kill people. Yeah. I mean, you could be an assassin or, I mean, you could be in the military. That's you what could be do. in the military. And that, that type of murder is okay. Cause yeah, we're because it's covered. It, cause it's, yeah. See, I know. good and bad subjective. I know. It's, <laughs> good and bad it's, subjective. It's all about context. It's which, all about whatever your beliefs which are. Brings me, which brings me to my next point. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Hitler wasn't that bad oh, of a yeah. guy. <laughs> Yeah, Hitler was all right. He was a good leader. He was just misunderstood. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Is like obviously, I mean, obviously nobody's endorsing Hitler. No, 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 terrible. No. But um, somebody thinks Hitler is a good guy. Even in today's world, people are out there still think he was a good guy. And, and that's what I'm saying. Like, yes, we use morality and we use the majority morality to justify what's good or bad. But like when it comes down to it. And you want to say a fact about somebody, you can't say, like, that serial killer is a bad guy. You can only say, that serial killer killed people. That's the only fact. Your That's opinion the- Your opinion can say he was a bad guy for killing people. He should go to jail. But that's just subjective to our society. Yeah, yeah but generally, if you tell me you've killed three or more people, I'm probably not going to like you. I'll, unless, probably, I'll, I'll stay away from you. Unless you've killed three or more people that the justice system has let get away for some reason. Dexter. Yeah. Or I love Dexter. <laughs> I love Dexter. Or or you know, 
self defense self defense is another thing like what's self defense like how do you know you're self defending yourself people may throw that out there just so they can get the rush of killing somebody mm -hmm. they feel threatened so they kill someone and they go to the, they go to court and they go oh well they're on my land threatening me so I protected myself yeah I did just you, did that last week did you Sorry. really like really <laughs> That's like every Tuesday I try to get one of those in <laughs> yeah <laughs> every Tuesday <laughs> But no, I, mean, I had I had that conversation with a couple people once, and I was like, one of the people I had that conversation with, they uh, uh, he'll be on this podcast eventually here. But uh, he uh, he likes Dexter. He loves Dexter the show. And I'm like, well, doesn't that doesn't that justify what I'm saying? Because Dexter's like a serial killer that we like. We're on his side. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the 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 root of that argument was that he was saying Eminem is the best rapper, and I said I think Eminem's the worst rapper. Just your opinion, you know, like uh, I, right, right. I like Eminem. I don't, I don't know if I put him. I mean, he's a good. I mean, he's a very good rapper. I think he's good. I mean, I he's very talented. I mean, I was listening to. Funny you say that. Yesterday, I was listening to Rap God, and yeah. I was looking at the lyrics and everything, and the way he was rhyming his syllables and the lyrics is pretty phenomenal. Yeah, and see, you can say that, and then his argument was like, "Oh, well, why is he number one on the boards?" And I'm like, "Because a lot of people think he's good." But the only thing you can say for fact is that he's a rapper. But he was saying for fact he's one of the best rappers. And I said, no, that's not a fact. You know, some, <laughs> that's not a so something else I was watching yesterday on YouTube, on YouTube, it was, I don't remember, it was like, I couldn't even look it up now, but it was um, voter's choice for like the best metal breakdown or the best track of the year. Uh, Lorna Shore to the Hellfire. Oh, yep. You, you know why? Because <laughs> it's... Uh, popular, yeah, popular. It hit the mainstream. It was it, Bro. TikTok, YouTube. It, to, it, 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 to the Hellfire, that song alone has rocketed that band to the top of the boards. So li there's so many other like metal bands, like death metal bands out there like that. You know, metal scene that are it, better, and they're not are they're like underground. You would say, where they're not very mm -hmm. popular, but they're damn good. And you show me a couple of them, they're really good, but they don't get attention like everyone else. Well, it, it, in that in that genre specifically, too, it takes a specific thing. Lorna Shore, does, it doesn't make sense. Okay, they they are phenomenal. They are good. They are phenomenal. Yeah. They are really good musicians. Like, but there's, but but the, the thing that I was getting at is the, the video I was watching, literally, I watched it was like a 13-minute video. I watched up to six minutes of it, and every single award was given to um, uh, the band that sings the uh, Demolisher, um, that Russian band. Oh, Slaughter to Prevail. Slaughter to Prevail. So, Bro, is what? Why? So, listen, <laughs> listen, every single, it was like album of the year, Slaughter, Slaughter to Prevail, Prevail won it. Okay. Slaughter to Prevail. See, but that's what I'm saying. It's, it's to you. Uh, yeah, but I know, I think that's to a lot of, so like Lorna Shore doesn't have a lot of people who dislike them. Slaughter to Prevail has like a 50-50 split i mean i i like both bands but i'm saying like when i was watching it i was thinking to myself okay come on there are so many other bands that i've oh, heard that's yeah, way yeah. better but they're not on the list and this what you were saying what the guy was like oh you know eminem is the best rapper well i don't think he is why is that because why is he so popular well it's because of that i don't think there should be other gets there's you noticed. there's other yeah. bands that i think that are better then I prevail, or not I prevail. Uh, Slaughter to prevail. Might prevail. as well be I prevail. They're kind of the similar. There's but, other yeah. bands. <laughs> there's other bands that think that's better than Slaughter to prevail, but I didn't. But they're not on there because they just they're not. Yeah, well, there's a there's a thing. Um, and I don't like. Have that. you heard it that um, a person, so an individual like you, you will only hear one percent of music in your lifetime. Oh, I believe it. So, the odds of you finding a band is like, you know, it's so low, and it's like bands like Lorna Shore. Lorna Shore wasn't big until To the Hellfire. Lorna Shore was still a small time band. They just the way they did their, I guess it just the well way that, it was marketed. That part, I guess that part it made so many people talk about it because it was so crazy and so original compared to any other metal band right now that it got people talking about it. And now Lorna Shore is known. And like I love Lorna Shore, I always have, but now people love them because they listen to that one thing, that one spot, and now they're listening to all their other stuff. Or you get the people that just want to be. Well, and they're like, oh, I love Lorna Shore. Okay, what's the song? Uh, the only one song that's it. Yeah, but uh, I mean, yeah, and like Slaughter to Prevail, I'm I'm confident in saying the only reason that he is well known or that they are well known is because of their the vocalist, demo the Demolisher part, the when he's talking in Russian, whatever. Uh, yes, and it's because they're a death metal band from Russia, which is not a common thing. But what's what's really what's really good, and I mean, 
I don't think they're the best. I do like them. Because I don't think they're terrible. They they do a lot of songs. Like if you go on YouTube, they have a like you know they have they do a lot of covers. Yep, yep, that too. He did a lot of stuff solo. I mean, he did you know. I mean, he was popular on YouTube before they were a band. Even you know, I will I will say this though. Okay, and um, people think that you know Alex Terrible makes that band. No, the fucking drummer does. Pretty good. If you pretty good. <laughs> Listen, bro. All their music makes me want to go to sleep. So, <laughs> I think it's so boring. I watched a video of that drummer before he was in Slaughter to or uh, Slaughter to Prevail when he's in his other Russian band. And you might know this YouTuber named Six Six Samus. He's a nope. he's a drummer. He he's a pretty good drummer, but like he does reaction videos and he you know he did a whole like ten minute video about that guy and he watched like three clips of him drumming prior to. Dude, that guy's a beast. Like I'm, he's at the level. I think of um that one band that you uh Infinite Annihilator? Yes. That drummer's really fucking crazy. He's at that level. I promise yeah. you. Well see, and I wouldn't even give Infinite Annihilator an award they're for just, best drummer. They're just goofy. They're he's crazy fast and he's very technical, but I wouldn't give him anything like as far as if I was to say who who do I think is the best drummer oh, in Holland. terms of all Categories, I wouldn't even say him. He's really fucking good. Though. Luke, Luke Holland, in my I opinion. I would say whoever the drummer is for Dealer, give it to him. Dealer. Dealer. I've sent you a couple of their songs, and it's like his fucking drums are. It, it's so. It's not even like in. I don't even know how to. I can't really explain it. I can't explain it because I don't play drums. But um, <laughs> he's very creative. And creative, his, creative. And his drums don't make any sense to the song, which in turn makes sense. Creative is a big part when it comes to musicians in general, whether you're a guitarist or a drummer or anything. You got to be creative with what you're doing. Yeah, I sent you the song uh, "Violence, Violent uh, Stimuli." That's what it's called. You sent me quite a few songs. I yeah. I don't remember all, and they kind of all mesh together. To be honest with you, mm -hmm. but well, that I song, mean, that song specifically, he does a weird drum thing that I have no idea what he's doing. I have no idea how he's keeping time. <laughs> well, Luke Holland is so good because he's very he's very technical too. And he does a lot of crazy stuff that shouldn't be in it, but it right. is, and it makes sense. And that's what I—that's what I find in a drummer to be good. Like yeah. the stuff we're talking about with uh, Slaughter Tobago and Infinite Annihilator, like that shit's great, and they're really good. But it's—it lacks creativity for whatever they're trying to do, speed or heaviness. I don't know, man. I will say though, when when I heard um, Slaughter to Prevail and I heard their drummer, you know, obviously I think he's good because he's fast and all that stuff. But like when I watched like his other videos and I actually saw a drum cam of just him playing, he holds the sticks backwards. That's how he plays. Oh yeah. So he doesn't do it where the point he flips it around so the butt end is hitting the drums. Oh, interesting. It's it's heavier, so yeah. he gets more of a hit. But he's still fast like that. It's he, he's his feet work is phenomenal too. Like yeah, it's. I had more respect. I have more respect for that band just because of the musical genius besides the, the art, besides the singer, okay? But, like, the band behind them? Yeah. Alex Terrible is... Terrible. Very, very one track. He does a good scream, and that's all he does the whole time, and I think it's boring his, as fuck. His vocal scream isn't, like, Lauren Shore. He has zero variation. It's, he literally just does one tone the whole time. It's so boring. He, he does. He, he mastered it. He's got it mastered. Oh yeah, it's it. He's really good at what he does, but I just think it's boring. I just yeah, think it, I you know I'm like you know I want to hear you know different ranges too. Like you know Lauren Shore, he could do different the, pitches and ranges. That's why they went crazy. That's why they yeah. went wild because he did shit that nobody was imagining. And he can of, and he know? can continuously do it live. Yeah, yeah. over yeah. and over and not just on a not just on a, a recorded track. He can do it live. Mm -hmm. Dude, in ten years, he's gonna have no vocals left at all. Yeah. He's I don't know. I've been doing vocals similar to that, not like at that level, of course. But I've been doing vocals similar to that for like thirteen years. Yeah, but do you go out on tour for well ten months? No, but I do scream every day, so I don't know. I, I do scream every day. We'll yeah, see what happens. But, but I don't think you're if you're doing it right, you don't lose your fucking vocals. I promise you this. Doing it right because yeah. I can do the noises that he does. Of course, not as well as he does. He's way better than I am. Um, but I can do the vocals that he does, and I, I know I'm doing it right because it doesn't hurt my throat. And the other day I was practicing a new scream. I was trying to get something new down, something a little bit weirder, and I fucked up my throat hard. And like as soon as I did it, I knew I did it wrong. 
and I was like, can't do that vocal style anymore. It sounded cool at first. As soon as I did it, like for a sentence, I fucked my vo- voice up. I was like, there's no way I can do that scream. Anymore. But you know, if you keep doing it, you're going to damage something. Yeah, so you can tell voice. as a vocalist, like it, unless you're um, Ollie Sykes from Bring Me the Horizon, and you can tell, and you just keep doing it anyways. Then your voice will be fine. Yeah, he 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 screwed his, <laughs> he screwed his voice up. Well, that's his own fault though, because there's no way he didn't know that he was doing it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, I want to get off the topic of metal before we get yelled at by Emily. Oh, she's sick of hearing about metal on this podcast. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's kind of well when you have people, you know, your friends that all have the same interests. That's just kind of what comes up. Actually, uh, Spotify tells me what the listeners are listening to as far as music goes. Oh yeah, it's a good chunk of punk and metal. So. Punk and metal. So they probably they probably don't hate this, but the people who don't, you know, there are people who don't. I'm assuming, so those people probably don't like it. Yeah, it's a problem. It's a problem with this podcast, actually. Well, we touched so many things, right? Like, uh, if you listen to, I had my North on, which is a local metal band. Oh uh, yeah, I heard the pot. Yeah, yeah, and then I had Sunshine on, who's in like a a weird like uh I don't remember how you go listen to the Sunshine episode. Um, he'll he'll describe his own band, but it's it's not metal. And he pushes this, uh, you know, more positive mind thought thing. And we talked about how to better yourself as a person. It's polar opposite topics. But it's it's cool, though. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Well, we're getting, I don't know. I like to listen to podcasts that are like that. That's why I like Theo Vaughn's podcast so much. Because one time, well, one day he had a fucking dude that was in MMA on his podcast. And the next day he has Tony Hawk. Like, <laughs> <He's> all, <laughs> he doesn't stick to one... Uh, right, it's which var- variety. That's that's nice. That's yeah. really good. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Um, have any has anyone else came up to you about uh doing model cars? Model cars? No, 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 no. <laughs> Just the one person told me. But I mean, kind of interesting. I was thinking the other. This has nothing to do with what you just said, but it re- jogged my my thought my memory. Uh, I was thinking about making candles recently. <laughs> Candle maker. I was watching a fucking movie, and this dude's making candles in the movie, and I was like. It sounds kind of fun, actually. You know, it'd be really fun making like glass, like those glass blowers where they made those decorative glasses and stuff. Yeah, if you go to um, Duluth, you can watch them do it. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, or, or awesome. I want to make my own forge and then like make like swords and you stuff. You want to fucking like smack on the fucking? Yeah. <laughs> you know that, how much work that is and how much skill oh, that takes. Do a lot. I you mean, would have to find somebody who knows how to do it to show you how. Oh, I wouldn't even begin to know where to. Yeah, I know. It's not as easy as just getting metal and putting <laughs> fire and hitting it. I. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that they made a lightsaber? Like a real one, like um, plasma or what? Um, yeah. Well, let me take a peek here. Well, I just bought a two hundred and thirty-four dollar one from Disney World. It, does, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't cut people. Do you think it compares to this? It doesn't cut people. I'm sure at the end they got the, like the final product. We'll skip all this and them making it. If you guys want to check it out, just type in the first real life lightsaber. Um, yeah, and then you can see it. But yeah, I want to see it turn on and see what it looks like when they. Oh wow! Okay. Oh, here we go. we're getting there. We're getting there. I wonder if uh, we'll just we'll just watch this part here. So. Yeah, it looks fucking cool though, doesn't it? <laughs> but it's it's attached to a. Yeah. Well, I guess it has to be because yeah. they can't just do it. There'd be no other way to do it. I mean, it's a tricky fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, here I am judging it. it. The but first what's happening the to the camera? Yeah, the camera like looks like it's frozen. Yeah. Oh fucking Christ! That's okay. Got tons of stuff set up behind us to really put this through its paces, including cutting through a steel door. But Anyways. Yeah. That video is actually available right now for our Patreon supporters yeah, there you and go. YouTube Jeez. members. It's a great time to be careful not to fucking touch that, I guess. This video early. Hey, what if you do? Else, be out next week. No Thanks more hand. Watching. You see, you, you can see so it when, when he so shakes it. It's like fucking. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like you fucking take a, you know, like a two-week break, and then everything doesn't want to work. <laughs> I mean, we're not professionals, all right? We have jobs. We don't do this for a living. Yeah. I mean, that's the goal, I suppose, but... Eh, not even really. Just for a hobby. Yeah. You think about things in the terms of, I want to make money from this. You're not going to make money. Or yeah. You're, or you're not going to have fun. Yeah, one of those things will happen. You'll either not make money and then be upset you're not making money. In return, or, you get frustrated and not do it anymore. Yeah, or you'll lose the whole reason you're doing it. You know, you're not going to have fun with it. And then, you know, or maybe you do make money, but then if you went into it with that mindset, chances are you're going to be um, swayed by the money for a lot of things. So yeah. not going into it with the mindset about money makes it so that 
I feel like I won't get swayed by. Here's a big fucking deal. Change all your morals and values to fucking get money. <laughs> you know. Today's podcast is sponsored by... <laughs> Today's <laughs> podcast is sponsored by uh, do what you want to do and have fun and don't give a shit. Is that good? <laughs> Today's podcast is sponsored by your local satanic group. Please go down to your local satanic <laughs> cult for your free robe and your free, uh, your free cape. Yep, hail Satan. Go to your local club and say a promo code. You are the host. You are the <laughs> host. Host Satan. Promo code host Satan. You get your free, uh, your free robe again. That is promo code. You are the host. <laughs> and do it. Do an ad read right now for. A, the satanic church. <laughs> uh, that'd be a good idea. Um, um, is is Jesus canceling your way of life? Is he getting in the way? Well, you can free up some of that time with the satanic church. Go ahead and join at 666-666-666. Go to satanicchurch.com backslash host. For your, f- for, your free free, your free trial, or your your free your free uh, robe and uh, yeah. mask. <laughs> your free robe and mask. Have you ever wanted to? Uh, oh, I don't know. Stay at home on one of those snowy nights, and you know, you think to yourself, "Hmm, what can I do that's 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 fun?" But I'm not gonna like you know go out and hurt myself. You know, you just you get a goat, you kill him. Yeah, you sacrifice him. Yeah. You draw a pentagram. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, I think that. Uh, that um uh fuck was that band fucking forgot but Uh-oh. they got banned they got banned from a country for sacrificing a goat live on stage i listen to them not like regularly but i listen to them they're pretty good they're, they're like a a black uh, blackened death metal oh okay so that explains why they're sacrificing a goat on stage yeah, they do some crazy shit man that's one of the concerts i don't think i would go to well maybe i I've, I've watched them uh, at a festival but they didn't do any of that shit. <laughs> Festivals probably, are a little different than their personal Probably not concerts, at a festival, so. yeah. They're probably going to do it like at a concert, not a festival. Which also, you couldn't get away with that type of shit in America, I feel like. Not because of a religious standpoint, just because the venue wouldn't let you. <laughs> They're looking and be like, you want to do what? With what? Yeah, and I mean, like, they got banned from this whole country. This whole last country for doing that. But somehow the venue allowed them to do that. Kind of the venue, they they probably like persuaded the venue by like giving them some drugs and getting them all high. And he's like, you know what? That sounds fucking great. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and the weird, yeah, he does weird shit though. Like even in America, uh, which this is not unheard of, but they do it kind of regularly. He has like the, well, I want to say it's fake blood, but it's probably not. It's probably his actual blood, but he'll just fucking like spit it all over the front row. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a hepatitis uh, central <laughs> right there. <laughs> they always tour with uh, Sodom, with the band Sodom. That sounds like sodomy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And cra- well, cra- they too were cradle of filth too. And cradle of filth, okay. Cradle of filth, they're solid. Yeah, they're they're not bad. So, uh, yeah, I watched all of those bands at a festival. But uh, yeah, so viewers, if you're listening, go to your local satanic group and your local town. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot we do that. Go to your <laughs> promo code. Um, you are the host. Tell them you are the host sent you. <laughs> we get a kickback on every goat sacrifice. <laughs> to, to, <laughs> to get to get your 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 goat sacrificial knife please go to <laughs> <laughs> if you uh what would be your ideal sponsor if you got sponsored my ideal sponsor who would well, you want to be sponsored by i like puma honestly i mean as you can tell puma. Puma, i puma. you know their clothes are comfy i like their hoodies and i like their shoes and i just have i have puma socks sounds like you're already doing a sponsor spot i got i got <laughs> i got puma shirts i got puma hoodies Puma, if you're listening, I don't have any viewers at all except for this podcast. <laughs> Maybe 50. <laughs> but if you want to sponsor me, I'd do it. Yeah, we got more than 50 viewers. Sorry, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. 51. Yeah, I will get about, <laughs> get about 100 views on every, uh, every 100 downloads on every episode. That's that's awesome. YouTube, not as much, but hey, we're so getting there. Actual, not viewers, but like uh, listeners. Yeah. We're getting there. Um, Emily has made the joke that I'm sponsored by Darn Tough Socks because I talk about them all the time. Are they good socks? Yeah, here. Hold on. Since they're talking about it so much, now I can put them on video. That's a darn tough sock right there, people. Are they comfy? Uh, yeah. Merino wool. Um, moisture wicking. Super tough. They also have a lifetime warranty. Yeah, but like, I don't want to spend like 10 bucks on socks. Okay, well, if you get these, you have to spend 20 so. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but you have a lifetime warranty. If they get... If you don't... 
want them anymore for whatever reason. They get ripped, wet, whatever. You literally send them your dirty socks or you go to REI or anywhere that carries darn tough and you give it to them and they give you a new pair. Imagine going to a place where they sell socks and you're like, hey, listen, I bought these socks like six months Dude, ago and they got a hole in them, but I have a lifetime warranty on it. Give me some new ones. They're They're designed for hikers. So... They they're would built. be the people to do that. Well, they're <laughs> built tough, I'm assuming. Yeah. And, like, <clears throat> if I go on my, um, this upcoming year, if I do my trail that I wanted to do, the Superior Hiking Trail, 300 miles, you know, I'll wear my fucking darn tufts. And all along that trail, they have outfitters, and I can stop off and trade them in my socks and get new ones. So, doesn't matter how dirty or nasty they are. You're li- so, when you buy, so that's forever. Forever. Lifetime. Yeah. So you don't got to keep, like, so the warranty doesn't just use it once. You can keep using it over nope, and over again. Forever. Well, f- well, shit, that's not a bad deal. Then just go out and buy, like, okay, split. Right, so 20 bucks for how many? One, one, one pair? One pair. Dude, just. Which I'm about to buy another one. So then I'll have two pairs of darn tough. And then when one gets rough, I trade those, get my new ones. I'll do the online so I can ship them. And I'll just wear my other ones. And then. You know, honestly, if you think about, like, let's say, not all at once, but let's say you buy enough socks. And, like, let's say you get seven pairs of socks. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a lot of money, but don't do it all at once. Do it over a course of a few, you know, years even. Mm-hmm. Cycle out all your other shitty socks. Dude, you're set for life then, technically. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the nice part about it, and people who don't hike might be like, oh, that's disgusting. The nice part about it is you can wear these socks for like a week. I mean, you don't I, have to wash them. I mean, I got pretty stinky feet, though. No, nah, I'm telling you, get some darn toughs. Uh, they'll, they'll amaze you. They don't retain any of the any of the moisture or any of the nastiness. I may have to because I seriously... That's why, that's why hikers choose them because, you know, you're hiking for a week without a shower. Bro, you can wear those socks. Listen, I went to Disney World in November, right? Mm-hmm. And a lot of walking. And I wore Puma shoes and I was comfortable. Like, I had no pain at all. And those Puma shoes, they're breathable. They had their, their like, cloth. So they're breathable. <clears throat> By the second day, my shoes and were permanently stained by my stink in my feet. That I actually had to go to like the little commissary or whatever, and I had to buy like gold bond like powder, oh, and gold baby bond, powder, yeah. and I had had to let those fuckers set overnight on the patio because if I left them in the little um the resort we were in, it stuck up the whole room. Yeah, should have got some darn tops. That's dude. what I'm saying. Would that help? Darn tops. I think yes, it would. That and body glide. I guess it was stinky feet. Body glide, body glide, and darn tough. Make that combo on your feet. I promise you, no more feet smell. Well, you know, I'm not trying to freak out any like viewers here, but I know a lot of you fuckers out here have to make stinky feet too. So don't yep. act, don't act like we're the bad people here. <laughs> and my advice to those people: get some body glide. Body it's glide. cheap. You don't need that much. You literally need a pea size on your finger. Rub it on your hands. Rub it on your feet. Put your darn tough socks on. It'll solve so many people's feet issues. Okay, that concludes uh, this uh, <laughs> segment of uh, body odor and <laughs> personal hygiene. We just talked about socks for like 10 minutes. <laughs> just, hey, yeah, you went to Disney World. Uh, how was that Star Wars shit? I was looking at that. I was like, holy fuck, I want to go do the, that so you much. See the, you see those rides I did? Dude, when they say Disney... Bro, it legit looked like you were in a Star Wars ship. When they say Disney... I was. I was in, <laughs> yeah. I was in space. Well, I, bro, it, I was. They launched me up in space. You could have convinced me. I'll tell you what. Look... <laughs> Disney, when they say Disney does it right, they literally do it right. Okay, it's it's expensive because, like, you have to pay, you know, we did a park hop. God, it was like four days for park hop was like $300 for a ticket for like three or four days or four or five, something like that. But then if you want to do the rides, you can either wait in line for two and a half hours or you could buy express lane pass, which is like 30 bucks a day. Which isn't a bad deal either, but yeah. Disney. What what it is? Disney is a very money hungry company, obviously. Well, you know, yeah, but they do it right though. Like it's not like you pay thirty bucks and you do like a Six Flags ride. It's freaking mint. Like it's a good ride. Yeah, and like those rides I went on were like interactive, and it was like a good five, ten, fifteen minute ride. Like the one ride you go on and you get cap. Like you 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 start off on a resistance ship and then you you're sitting on it or you're sit, you're standing in it. And like there's a ro- um, robotic like figures and shit, and like everything around you is like you know all hologram and 3D, which is really cool, like kind of VR basically. And the whole ship is shaking. And all of a sudden, you know, they're like, "Oh, we're getting sucked in by the you know the first order tractor beam," and like you get in, and the doors open up, and then you're in a freaking ship that looks like a first order ship. Bro. That's where all those stormtroopers were sitting. Yeah, up and there. there was a uh, was it Lord Vader or was it uh, Kylo Ren? Kylo Ren. I can't yeah. remember which one. But. So like you get off, and like 
they're they're dressed they're dressed in the part and they're treating you like prisoners or standing with Bro, their arms behind their back they were and they're good. like they're good actors too they're like <laughs> they're like they're like filthy resistance standing in line two here two here three in a line three in a row and like they're like mar- like telling you to go and everything so it's crazy so we get in and then they uh you get in this little chamber you're in a holding cell and then they're like they lock you in there and they go stay you know Kylo Ren will be with you shortly and they lock the door behind you and you're sitting in there for like quiet like nothing for like a good two minutes just sitting there like what's gonna happen next all of a sudden you hear like something cutting like a plasma touch torch or a plasma torch mm-hmm. and you look over and the, and the wall's like it's crazy and the wall falls down and it's a little robot droid and then they're like oh quick get in you know we're gonna save you and you get in this fucking ride and you go through and that's where all the you know, I was mm-hmm. oh, dude, it was nothing. Kylo Ren. There, there weren't real. They were all animatronics, but it was crazy. That's like, crazy. And when they did a lightsaber, the the coolest Wait, part. Uh, Kylo Ren was an animatronic. Yes. Oh, okay. I thought it was an actor. It was an animatronic. Dude, it looks like it, it. It looks like real. The only <laughs> real things were like the actually the humans, like the the, the guards that were actually escorting you. Every everything else was animatronic. Huh. And the crazy thing is, the coolest part was whenever you get to this elevator part, and I know it's my snap story too. You get in the elevator, and then the elevator doors close, and all of a sudden, Kylo Ren goes on top of the elevator and shoves his lightsaber through and starts, like, cutting a hole in it, and then the elevator drops, but when it drops, you feel like you're free-falling. Like, it, it's, Jesus. It's, it's nuts. So we, so we split it between five of us. There's five friends. We all went. So we stayed at Saratoga Springs, which is, like, a resort. I mean, mm-hmm. it's expensive. I mean, for the room for, like, four days, it's, like, four grand. Yeah. But we split it. So my sh- my half was about a thousand dollars. So like my half for the tickets for Disney World and for my four day stay at the Saratoga Spring was about thirteen fourteen hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. My plane ticket was cheap. It was like one hundred fifty bucks because Sun Country does deals all the time straight to uh, Orlando. Now the food there is expensive, and yeah. the food you got to pay for out of pocket and anything else you want to do. Um, my credit card mm-hmm. bill by the end of it was about a thousand dollars. How much? Does Disney World itself actually cost, like, to get into the place? It, it's the way they do. It's weird because, like, you could either you could buy. There's different ways you can buy tickets. You can buy either like, I just want to go to Magic Kingdom, which is the just the oh, original. you can buy in, like parts. Yeah, well, I would just do the Star Wars shit. Well, you can do so. That would be Hollywood Studios because um, Galaxy's Edge is in Hollywood Studios. Oh, so that gives you like a bunch of the Hollywood Studios stuff. Then. So Hollywood so that's Studios. That's all I care about. Yeah, Hollywood Studios has fuck Galaxy's Edge Kingdom. in it. <laughs> now, Magic Kingdom is you know the OG one, the castle and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, fuck that shit. I just want that Hollywood Studios. Then there's but um, Animal Kingdom was pretty cool because the um, you did the whole package and you did yeah. everything. Animal Kingdom was pretty cool because you know what's in there? Um, Pandora from Avatar. Oh, they have Pandora cool. Land, and they have a Pandora ride that's pretty sick. That seems like it'd be cool. I didn't like that movie, but that seems like it'd be a cool ride. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it was really. It was, yeah. That was pretty cool. Well, and my question is like, did you take your time with it all, or did it? D- does it feel like something that's attainable in one day? Well, we didn't. We didn't do all parks. It's impossible. That's what I'm saying. It'd be impossible to do all parks all in one, one day. day. Yeah. If you spend on going to Disney for about four or five days, I recommend getting a park hop because you can go to Epcot for a day. You could do Hollywood Studios for a day. You could do Magic Kingdom for right, a day. That's what I'm saying. Like, could you? you now, could, there's no way you could pack it into one day. No, 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 no. If you were going, if you were going just for like you know two or three days, I would recommend maybe do one park, two parks, maybe. Yeah. But if you're going for five days, you could do you could do all five in five days. Spend about a day at a park, basically. Mm-hmm. It, it's huge. It's yeah. not like it's big. It's like half of Florida. It's huge. <laughs> <laughs> like Animal Kingdom itself is is, is like. Because it's a it's a um what do you call it like a uh, animal reserve basically, so it's on the grasslands, so it's like a big state park basically. It's like that one. That's like, like legit, thousands and thousands. That's like legit animals and shit. Yeah, they yeah. have they have a ride where you go through where you can see like rhinos. That's like a and, safari kind of yeah safari quote unquote. Yeah, so Animal Kingdom is huge to begin with, but um Epcot's Epcot's pretty cool because it's like a journey around the world. So there's a big lake in the middle. And you just walk around a circle, and there's there's France, there's um, there's uh, there's Japan Town, to- little Tokyo they call it. Oh, is that cool? There's, there's anime shops. Um, there's hibachi Dude, restaurants. That's dope. Wait, so so wait, uh, so you're walking through, and they've basically reconstructed that where these locations look like, yes. and you can go, yeah. like in yeah. like a bunch of different stores, and, yeah. and okay. So you you walk in. I got a weird question. Yeah. Uh, did they uh, keep it traditional with the uh, workers? Or? <laughs> Only you would ask that. <laughs> I know. 
<laughs> I will say they're all Asian. That's what I'm saying. Yo, when yeah, you applied, so, when you applied for that, they would only hire Asian. Yeah, so, so <laughs> no, no, seriously. So all the all the so when you go through Epcot, all the little towns you go in, the people working there are from there one way or another either their parents are from there and they live there or they're actually from there and they barely speak that you know they speak english but i want to get one there. of those people on here and see if that makes them upset or not <laughs> that's that's the way that they, they want to keep it authentic as possible so when you go through little, well, that's what i'm saying when you go through little german town it's do you think that german. any of those fuckers are offended about the fact that disney world's like we want to keep it as authentic as possible so you have the heritage from here and now you work for disney <laughs> Doesn't something about that seem fucking weird? <laughs> you know what sounds really weird? You know what? But you know what's really weird about all that, too? You know the conspiracy going around, or that you heard about Walt Disney, right? Back in like the 50s and 60s when Walt Disney was around? He was like a Nazi. Like, well, yeah, I think I he mean, actually was. That's not a conspiracy, was. is it? Yeah. I mean, that's like legit. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> do you think it's even weirder that they're making them be the right heritage, especially in Germantown, where they got to be Germans? Does that like. The whole thing. Kind of blows my mind a little bit, actually. You want you want to know something funny? And this is going to be like a, a dark humor joke, so I hope your audience can uh, take that. We probably had worse. <laughs> All right. Well, so we were going through a little little German Germany town, and uh, my friend Ryan made a um, <laughs> kind of a joke. So when you go through German town, there's a part where they have like it's probably the size of your living room and kitchen together, but it's like a little train set, and it's like you know a little, ta- little tr- like a, like a train village, right? Okay. There's a there's a train that was derailed, mm-hmm. right? I think you know where I'm going with this. Yeah, okay. And my buddy looks at me. He goes, "Uh oh." I go, "What?" He goes, "We got Jews in the loose." I was, I was look at him, and he's like, "He's like they didn't." No. Make it. He goes, "He goes they didn't make it to Auschwitz on time." Oh my god. Well, I mean that would be a good thing, then, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be. Yeah. But then, but then we started. We <laughs> then we were laughing, whatever. Then all of a sudden, another train came over. He goes, "Oh nope, there's another train." So yeah, they're oh, getting god. picked up. Oh god, not good. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, wait, Disney would be the type of, Disney would be the type of company, like, now that you're telling me about all this, like, they're keeping things uh, traditional to the heritage, so you could, they would be go. the type, they'd be the type of motherfuckers to have a Holocaust museum and then have actors acting out being Jews getting killed. They would be the company to do that. They, get, they, they get the little star on their, on their yeah. Name. Disney would be the company to do that. No, but, but Epcot was pretty cool because the whole area, that whole place though is if you want to eat like some good food epcot the whole area park is really good because i guess when you go to like when you're walking down traditional you, food too like german yeah the, okay. yes the, the, you know snitchel snitch snitchel whatever it's uh, called yeah wiener snitchel wiener snitch, yeah. yeah i mean everything the beer and you know they have traditional german Beer's beer time. and everything yeah. yep yeah yep. it's and like same thing with tokyo i mean we they have like authentic like some Japanese. I mean, we had hibachi, which isn't really authentic, but they have like authentic yeah. places if you want authentic. So authentic. like uh like what different um. I mean, I don't know, because like uh, I really like Thai food. Do they have like a mini Thailand or they don't get that? They don't have depth? a Thailand. They have a they have Tokyo. They have Morocco or so Morocco. They, they just do like uh, probably the, the most popular most towns. popular destinations. German. So yeah. There's a German one. There's French. Australia, French. So what? Um, United Kingdom. Did you guys spend a lot of time in the French one? I'm kind of interested. That was that. the first one you go through. Uh, we kind of looked in the shops and stuff. They had yeah. some pretty good candy and stuff. Well, I was more wondering about like if you were to eat at one of the restaurants in the French place, what kind uh, of fucking food do they have? Because French people aren't really known for their food. No, it's that's more why sweets and treats. That's why we didn't really. I mean, they they have some pretty good treats. Well, see, that's what I'd be interested in if I went there. I'd be trying to take a peek at the uh, the foods in the French spot. They they have the Netherlands, Netherlands. That little area. Yeah, they have pretty good chocolate in that area. Chocolate. Yeah. What is the Netherlands known for as far as cuisine sweets, goes? I think. Well, sweets. I mean, they have some other things too. But anyways, the whole thing. And there's a. I think there's Aust- no, not Australia. No, Mexico. There's a Mexico one. Maybe Australia one too. Mexico. You're in fucking Florida. Just go two feet over. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they they have all these little. They're all around. It, it's pretty cool. So Epcot's pretty. I would recommend going to Epcot just to so do the shops. You think that's a whole? You think that's a whole day in its own? Epcot's probably about a half a day. Yeah. Depend on it. Like if you're only going for like two towns, you're probably not gonna half a day. But if you're if you want to walk the whole like the whole path because it's a big lake in the middle. And you literally walk around. This but you don't have lake. to go in every shop. What if I just want to walk through most of them and only stop at a few places? About, about a half day, yeah. I would say, because it's pretty crowded too. You got to take the crowd into consideration, and you yeah. know the walking and everything. You got to go during a really bad storm. Well, right now, if you want to go, <laughs> yeah. go during COVID because they say it's half full right now. Yeah. Which what was is, it like when you were there? Packed or? You know, I, I didn't think it was. I mean, I, I thought it was pretty busy, but I didn't think it. Would be I, I I imagine it being like you know any other amusement park, 
you know, and I asked because like my friend Ryan, his wife Alyssa, they go, this is their third time going. And they went prior to um, COVID and they said, this is like nothing. Like COVID, you're literally, like pre COVID, you're a shoulder to shoulder the whole time. Mm. This one, it's a lot, it's a lot better. It's not nearly as bad. So if you want to go, I recommend going in the next few months, I would say, or well before COVID or before, before COVID ends, if it ever does end. It won't. So, um, yeah, that's kind of crazy though. I don't think, it, I think it would take a lot of the enjoyment out if you the, were fucking packed. Like the that. mask policy, you only, it's <laughs> stupid. You have to wear a mask only when you go in buildings or on buses to go from park to park. But when you're walking around, you don't have to. Oh, that's pretty good then. Yeah. So yeah. make sure you keep your mask in your pocket or something. That's not so bad. Yeah, I really hope I get the chance to do that, but we'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah. But yeah, Disney World, if anyone wants to go, if they haven't gone yet or they have gone, they'll tell you that they it's expensive, but they do it right. Yeah. I that's... promise you it's I I, I I spent like probably two grand total with everything, like my share, and I want to go again. Yeah, like, I don't, I don't know why it shouldn't be as expensive as it is. It is because the, I mean they, they own so many things they could make it way more affordable. We ate at the steakhouse that was in, it was in the Magic Kingdom, and it was in a pretty fancy hotel. So it was a fancy restaurant. It was like a, I wouldn't say fancy fancy, but it was like a good four star probably. Yeah, I got a, I got a. Uh, prime rib or no New York strip steak, you know, twelve ounce steak with you know your salad, baked potato, and all you know traditional stuff, seventy five dollars. Not so bad. So you know, it, have you been to Bella Cucina before? No, I haven't. No, that place is crazy, super expensive but delicious. Yeah, so that, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. So when I went in there, I'm like, I look at the prices. I'm like, I want a steak, and I'm like, but is it gonna be worth it? And I'm like, well, I'm at Disney, you know, I'm on vacation, right? Mm. So I go and I get it, and I would say. That is the first expensive steak that I've had that is worth seventy five dollars. Like, yeah. like I ate it. It was probably, and I know people are saying, "Oh, there's probably better steaks," but there probably is. I'm sure there is. But my personal steak is like basically a Texas Roadhouse. Like, I don't really go to fancy steak hey, houses. Texas Roadhouse makes a good steak. They, they are good. They you know, twenty five bucks you know, average, right? Yeah. Yep. But this was seventy five dollar for a steak, and it was delicious. Yeah, bro. If you like steak, man, I can't suggest enough. Go to Bella Cucina. Where is that? Is that here? In, in, the, in the cities, downtown in the Minneapolis. City. Um, it's, uh, I want to say, it depends on what time you go. Uh, it's any. It can be anywhere from 50 to $70 for a person. You pay just per person. There's just a flat cost. Is it like Fogo de Chao? You know what? You've heard of Fogo de Chao? That's what a Brazilian. I? I'm an idiot. I may. I mean Fogo de Chao. That's what you're thinking I'm of, I'm talking right? about Bella Cucina, which is here in town, which is delicious. Yeah, the Italian place, which right? Which is delicious, okay, you're, by the way. So Fogo de Chao, that, that's, the, that's where they get the Fogo meat de Chao, and they, Yep, yep. And okay. you flip your card, and they just bring you meat. Why am I saying Bella Cucina? I don't know. That place is delicious, though. Okay. $80 for a fucking pasta, basically. but <laughs> they good, though? Really good. They have delicious fucking crab cakes. Oh, $15 for two crab cakes. So good. Mm-hmm. So good. Anyways, yeah, I mean, fuck to chow. Third. Yeah, I, I've heard of it, but I never ate it. But that's like where you get all the meat, and I heard it's really good, though. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. a good time. It's a good time. You just flip your little fucking thing, and they just won't stop coming. Meat, 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 more meat. when you're done, you just... You just flip it back over, you can go get yourself something at the salad bar. Every time you go there, tell them it's a thing. Like, no matter who you go with, it's our anniversary. It's our birthday. Why, do they give you something special? Or they what? give you this really fucking fancy dessert every time. They don't even ask you. They just ask you, like, you put it when you do your reservations because you have to do reservations. Put it in there. So, anniversary? Yeah. They don't fucking know. <laughs> so, I mean, birthday, they can they can ask, but they can't ask for anniversary. They can't tell. They don't ask on the birthday, though. Oh, yeah. You know. They just put it in online, and they'll just treat you the same way no matter what. That's cool. Shit. I don't have to do that. Yeah, <laughs> they I make heard, so much money. It's like, what the fuck do they I, care? I heard good things about Phil Good at Chow. I've it's, just never had it. It's a good time. Yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, Hell's Kitchen used to be a good time, but is there one here in Minneapolis? Anymore. Minneapolis, yeah. I we I almost ate at one in Vegas when I went a few years back, but I was looking at the menu, and the only thing that remotely that I could either pronounce or looked good <laughs> was the rack of lamb. Yeah, and it was like a hundred and twenty bucks or something like that. No, I mean, Hell's Kitchen's good. It's just uh, they've changed. It used to be this like dark, edgy place, you know, Hell's Kitchen. But now they like brightened it up. It's like a, it, it, they took the same path that Hot Topic did. <laughs> but yeah, Fogo de Chao sounds pretty good. But yeah, Disney, yeah. I recommend going to Disney. Disney. Yeah. Disney. I hope I get the opportunity to. You need to. I think everybody should, whether you're an adult or a kid or whatever, you can go. You have fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hell Satan. Hell Satan. Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> All right. 
Well, I think that's where we're going to wrap things up. Mm-hmm. I want to welcome uh, Jake one more time to the uh, the podcast team here now that we have. You know, even though we didn't really have any topics, we were able to bounce stuff off back and forth pretty well. So, so I like about podcasts is like uh, you can randomly go down a hole about socks for 20 minutes. And it doesn't fucking matter. I mean, we went from, we went from, I don't remember in, in order, but we talked about socks and there was music and then there was Kentucky trip and there was Disney. Then there was uh, what games for, I mean, there was everything. Yeah. We, we just it's yeah. literally hit everything. Yeah. Try to hit all the topics that your viewers are interested in, I think. Thanks for listening to this episode. If you guys want to be on an episode, you can email youarethehostpod at gmail.com. In the subject line, you put submission if you'd like to be on an episode. If you want us to talk about something, you can put question or commentary in the subject line. If you are listening to this podcast on any of the podcast platforms, you can also find a video version of this podcast on YouTube. Thanks a lot. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Bye. Bye.